Good afternoon, viewers. Um, once again, my name is Ali Sohna, and we are here today in Mr. Senior Secondary School to attend the program seminar. And we are here with the president, and we want to ask a few questions uh, about the seminar. So, can you introduce yourself? My name is Ibrahim Adawa. I'm the current president of Mr. Kama School, 2024-2025. Um, Mr. President, uh, I would like to ask a few questions um, about the seminar. So, what do you think about the seminar? What impact does it have in the uh, students and the society? Actually, the seminar is an annual event where Mr. Commerce Club hosts every year. We bring people that are already in their businesses, that they already have their businesses, to come here and share their ideas with the students, to come and share their insights with students. To make sure they serve as a role model for the students. So that's why we see it is necessary for us to also to call for this important event. Okay, talking about the successful of the trade fair with the amazing speakers that you have from different different companies that come to elaborate on how they start up a business. So what do you think we can uh, do to maintain that thing? To grow up and then we will self employ at the end of the day. Actually, as a president of the Industrial Commerce Club 2024 2025, this is my promise to people that I'm, I'll also I'll try by all means this year I bring more innovation to this club. That is what I what, what that is what I and my executive will embark on. That's why we set a team that, that talk about the building a business from mindset to prison. We see that as a, as a commerce student or as a commerce club member, at least you should have a business idea whereby you can, at the end of your, at the end, you can be self-employed. You can be self-employed. The, the notion that we have to depend on the people for employment is what we want to eradicate. Into the group. To make sure after graduation, we all have, oh, we have our businesses that we will embark on. At least you can try to employ even few people to make sure we change their life and bring the economic the economic opportunities that people will have in this country. That's why we see it's necessary. We bring people from diverse area, from insurance, from GCCI, from other 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 business areas to come and share their experience, to come and share their insight what they have what they have to you know, my general members. Okay. We have learned that uh you talked about the many opportunities that you, are, you guys are trying to um, create for the young ones that are coming. So what are the opportunities that you guys are um, planning for for the young ones? Yeah, the opportunities that we are planning for the young ones is like, I see that the young people, they are having their opportunities, but to venture in those opportunities is So that's why even in our commerce club, our, general, our members, our meeting with the general members, we test them, we give them the topic business topic they go and do their research imagine our last meeting with the general members we are by 11 we are by 12 12 12 arts morning art students they come with their team with the topic that talk about the starting a business with zero capital and they do justice to the topic that i the president and i i i, I term that as one of the most successful meeting with that i have in my general members so as an art student they are doing that I see the potential that is in the arts and also in the other fields of studies, sciences and commerce. Yeah, that's why the business is not only centered for the commerce, but also the arts students are also venturing into the business. So that's why we open all the students to come in and also to share their ideas that we have. And also we bring people in, even in our general meeting with the general meeting with the meeting with the general members, we, we invite people like teachers to come also there and share their experiences with the general members. I was the student of this noble school um, and she's a final year student at the university. So you are highly welcome for the Ninja stage. Good morning to the members of the high table, ladies and gentlemen. I am Fatma Khadijao, the founder and manager of Khadija Pisa Mother School Kentan. I am also an alumni of Nusrat Senior Secondary School. 
and serve as the financial secretary of 2019-2020 I am honored to be here today to talk about a fundamental topic which is sales technique as a startup with its theme building a business from mindset to creation. Entrepreneurship, especially those of us who are starting out with limited life, um, limited resources and visibility, developing effective sales strategy is crucial for growth. It will help in sustainability and it will help in ultimately building a strong brand. Sales is the thinking that drives a startup growth and mastering the right techniques can make all the differences in your business. Today I will be sharing some sales techniques that have worked for many startups and how this can be tailored to the unique challenges and opportunities that come with starting a new business. Whether you are selling products, service or ideas, these techniques will help you build relationships, close deals and scale your staff. So the first one is knowing your product and your market. As a business owner, you have to know your product in and out. As a startup, you are your brand's best advocate. No one can advocate for your brand better than you, the owner of the business. You have to talk about your business in a clear, concise, and compelling way because it is so vital in helping you to have a strong brand and also maintaining your business to be sustainable. You have to start by understanding the features and benefits and unique selling points that differentiates your product from your competitors. You need to know who are your competitors and what advantage because this will help your brand to stand out in the business. But beyond that, you need to understand the problem you are solving. That's why normally when you go for pitching competitions, it's very important for the judge to know the problem you are solving because if there is no problem, then there is no business. What need does it meet for your customers? Why should they care? Why should they buy from you instead of buying from your competitors? But knowing your product isn't enough as a business person. You must also understand your market, the customers you are trying to serve, who are they, what are their pain points, how do they make purchase decisions. You have to make a thorough market research before you venture into any business. You have to do surveys or go on interviews and observing your competitors as I have mentioned that. This will help you target the right audience with the right message. The more you understand your customers, the better you can align your sales techniques and meet their expectations and deliver value because I believe value is key in every business. The second point is um, building relationship over transaction. In the Gambia, most of the businesses, all they do is just manage, manage, but it's very important for you to connect with your customers. As a startup struggling with misconception that sales is all about pushing your product, in reality, sales is about building relationships, especially in early stage as a business person. As a new business, you have the opportunity to connect with your customers on a deeper level, more personal level, focus on providing value and demonstrating genuine interest in solving their problems, rather than just pushing your products. Customer trust is everything. I believe Mr. Sar rightfully mentioned um, that it's very important for your customers to trust your brand. In a, as a startup, engaging customers, answering their questions, and addressing their concerns in a transparent and a respectful manner will build credibility, be consistent in your communication, and make sure to follow up with potential customers. You have to follow up and ask for feedbacks from your customers because this feedback will help your brand grow. Negative feedbacks, mostly people take it as an insult. 
this negative feedback that they will give you, it will really help your brand if you are a smart person. This approach will not only help you gain loyalty from customers, but also turn them into advocates who will recommend your products or service to others, which is through referrals. Because as a business person, you want your customers to say, stay and refer orders to you. This means that your products are good and there are a lot of values in your products. The third point is refining your elevator pitch as a startup. You will find yourself explaining your business often where it's at networking events, through calls, or casual conversations. I believe net, your network is your net worth. That's why wherever you find yourself, try to network as much as you can because you don't know where opportunities might come from. Think of it as a quick sales tools and help you grab attention in on the chapter sequence, which is the elevator pitch. Because normally people think that pitching is all about going to competition, but as a business person, you have to pitch about your business every day to your customers. Each and every customer that comes to you to buy products, you have to pitch for them. The key to a great elevator pitch is focusing on the value your product provides rather than just listing features. Use language that is simple and avoid jargons. Remember, your goal is to make all the listeners curious enough to want to learn more. Leveraging social proof and testimonials. Most of you that have my contact will attest to the fact that I always like giving reviews that my customers send to me on my status because this helps your customers to trust and believe in your brand. So one of the most effective sales techniques for a startup is leveraging social proof. The idea that people tend to trust the experience of others as a new business you may not have hundreds of testimonials, but you can still build trust by showcasing the positive feedback you have received from all your customers, whether through online reviews, word of mouth, or case study. Social proof will help you establish credibility and increase your chance of closing deals, which I believe is very important. Incorporate testimonials on your websites if you have one, in your sales pitch and on social media platforms to create a sense of trustworthiness and reliability in the eyes of your potential customers. Use of consultative sales selling approach. Instead of focusing solely on your on pushing on sales, adopt a consultative sales approach. These techniques involve open-ended question and deep understanding the customer's need before proposing a solution. By positioning yourself as a consultant, which I believe most businesses in this country we don't do, and I believe it's very important for brand growth. You can build a strong rapport with the customer and gain valuable insight into their requirements. For example, instead of saying this, our latest collection of buyers. They are the best quality you will find. Try asking them, what challenges do you face when shopping uh, modest wares? What qualities are the most important to you in an outfit? This shift in focus shows the customers that you care about finding a solution to the problems, not just making sales. You have to set clear goals and metrics as a startup. It is essential to have a clear sales goal Track your progress. It's very important when you're a business person, you, that's why it's important to have a business plan. You should have goals that you need to follow. Maybe you say from January 1st to December 31st, I want to achieve so and so and so. And you try working towards those goals because this will help your brand grow as a startup. Are you aiming to secure 10 new customers a month? or perhaps increasing your revenue by a certain percentage each quarter. Setting clear goals allow you to measure your efforts, evaluate what's working and make adjustments as needed. Sales metric as converse rate, customers acquisition cost, and average deal size will give you insight into your sales performance. 
and help you identify areas of improvement. You have to embrace digital sales too. You know we are in the digital area. Born are those days that we do business by face to face. Now a lot of people are doing business by using online platforms, leveraging their products on WhatsApp, Instagram, TikTok, and other platforms. So you have to invest in your business. If you feel like you don't have the means or you don't have the know-how of how to leverage these products on online, you have to hire somebody that's more experienced in that aspect because that's how visible your business can be. And if you want to reach international market as well, you need to pay someone to do the adverts for you. Um, the final point is um, persistence and resilience. As a business, you will face rejection, objection, and tough competitions. But the most successful entrepreneurs are those who continue pushing forward. Revis revisit your sales and strategies, learn from each experience and adapt to feedbacks. Resilience fear with right sales techniques will drive you forward to your goals. And also, I would like to add that a lot of businesses in this country, like keeping our sales record is a problem. I have been, when I started business newly, I hardly record my sales. All I do is I sell to people and I know that I have made a lot of sales, but at the end of the day, I don't know where my finances go because I have not been keeping proper records of my financials. So it's very important as a startup, whenever you sell to somebody, even if it's a boutique, you need to make records of it because this will help you to know how far you have gone with your business. And... As I always say, entrepreneurship is the way forward. And I would love you all to say entrepreneurship is the way forward. I will complete, conclude by saying sales is an integral part of any startup business. For entrepreneurs, developing the right, the right sales techniques early, early on can be a difference between failure and sustainable growth. By knowing your products, building genuine relationships with customers, Defining your elevator pitch and leveraging social media proof, adopting a consultative approach and setting clear goals, and utilizing digital tools, your startup can establish a strong sales foundation. Remember, sales is not about being pushy. It's about delivering value, solving problems, and building long-term relationships with your customers. And I love you all to see entrepreneurship is the way forward. Entrepreneurship is the way forward. Thank you. How I started. Okay, his question is how I started the business. Well, I believe um, if some of the teachers were here, they will attest to the fact that I love selling when I was in grade 10. I love selling like I do sell to my fellow students teachers it doesn't matter so I started my business with cosmetic products like sprays you know normally students need that so if you have a body cream and it's finished you come to me and tell me this is what I want I bring it to you and give it to you for two weeks then you pay back my money you can pay in installment then at the end of the day I give you your products so fast forward, uh, when I was in grade 12, I was introduced to African Youth Entrepreneurship Academy, which is IA, um, from a friend. So I started going for like seminars and other events, entrepreneurial events that they normally um, organize. So in 2021 to 2022, I was um, one of the people that was selected to participate in the national kitchen training, which was organized by Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, GCCI. So I had my kitchen training there. And the next year, I saw an opportunity, which is um, Youth Connect Gambia. So normally they are also into entrepreneurship, it's a social enterprise. So 
I went and tried my chance and I participated in the kitchen competition. And Alhamdulillah, I came out as the winner. So I knew that um, venturing into these cosmetic products was not something that I really wanted because all I was having is you're making profit, but what impact was I having in people's lives? There was no impact at all. The only thing was just me and me and me, and I was just selling. So I, I started a business, which is the Modest Clothing brand. It was Fadija's collection at first. So I changed it to Fadija because a lot of people are using the word collection. I want it to be unique and stand out. So I started the business and I employed more people that had the skill and the know-how in showing. Showing was something that I was passionate about because my mom is a seamstress. She was showing as well. So she trained me how to show. So I also trained other people and I brought them on board to also join me into the business. So going forward, the following year, the GCC I organized, um, the Kerjula Challenge. And Alhamdulillah, I also came out as the winner, which really helped in boosting my business. So I believe like, basically that's it. I believe these two organizations really helped to shape and grow me. And I am so glad that I'm also working so hard to make or have impact in other people's lives. Because I believe the reason why they came up with such initiative it's to make impact and have impact on people's lives. I always say you can call yourself an entrepreneur when you do not have any impact in people's lives. Everything you do is just me, 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 me. And as a business person, you can't even use the term me. It's we. Because Mr. Saad rightfully mentioned, you and your business are two different entities. So you are different from your business. You... Even though you are the one that owned the business, but you are different from your business. So I believe this is how I started my journey and I'm grateful to the Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Youth Connect Gambia for giving me this opportunity to be where I am today. I'm indeed grateful. Thank you. I think from now on, our sisters right there um, will do something. Because once you start a small business, I think if you don't give up, you will meet your dream. So we can learn from her all this competition that she went and won. Should not surprise you because she's a Nesbeterian. And once a Nesbeterian, you get it right. So, we have the brain of the country. You know why I call them the brain of the country? Because anything related with the commercial activities, they are the one in charge. How many of you attended trade via CCI? And how many of you enjoyed it? And you can learn a lot. You can also buy their product and from there. You can see the type of business that they do. So we have Mr. Babu Marasaho from the Gambia Chamber of Commerce Industry, that is DCI. He is the deputy CEO of Gambia Chamber of Commerce Industry. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Saho is not only the CEO of Gambia Chamber of Commerce Industry, but also holds many responsibilities in, the, in other departments. The one who is responsible for business development in the CCI. Second, he is responsible for transit trade in the industry. He is also responsible for the strategic partnership in the CCI. He is also responsible for entrepreneurship development and capacity building. I think if he comes here, we're going to learn a lot of things and we're going to um, um, get new areas of development to ourselves. So, Mr. Sao, you are highly welcome. I mean, I've, I've been sitting there 
and and I've been I've observed that most of you have been sitting for a very long time. So I will just propose. Um, my speech will not be long. It will be very short and precise. So can you all just stand with me? I know you've been sitting for a very long time. So I'm going to propose two things. If you know you're young enough, shake your head. If you know you're old enough, shake your waist. Please sit down. Thank you. Uh, to Omar, thank you for, for, for the introduction. Uh, this is the, I think it's the second time I'm coming to your school to have such an engagement with you. Uh, the last time was um, about three, maybe four years ago at the building upstairs. I think it's the library. So when I was told that um, there's another opportunity to come and speak to you guys, I, I was very, very excited. You know, I told Mr. Nyang, ah, it's Nusra. I like the school. Let's go. Um, it's interesting that ours is that we have to talk about entrepreneurship mindset. Uh, what I will not do is to tell you what entrepreneurship is about, because I know you know. But I, what I will do is to share some experiences with regards to what makes or what could make a successful entrepreneur. And you need not go further. You just need to look in front of you in the presence of Fadiya and you can see something that can really inspire you. And one thing I will start with is seriousness. To be an entrepreneur, you have to be serious. How do I know Fadiya? Because of jump. Because she is persistent. She is always there. When there is an opportunity, she doesn't say that I am tired. She will show up 10 times just to make sure she gets it one time. So you have to be serious. And I think, especially for the ladies who are aspiring to be entrepreneurs, an example of how serious you can be is right in front of you. And I will encourage you, after this program, approach her, get her contact, talk to her, engage her, let her tell you what she did to be able to embody so much seriousness that she has beginning, she's beginning to become an embodiment of success, an example that we can always be proud of to show any young lady that this is the way to go. Another thing that I will talk about is honesty. You see, anybody can buy and sell. Anybody can claim that they're an entrepreneur. But one thing that not anybody can just freely claim is honesty. You cannot buy it. You cannot wear it. But you can become it. Most businesses have succeeded because the owners were honest. And most have failed because the owners were dishonest. With honesty, you just don't acquire it in a day. You acquire it with time. If you are dealing with people as a business person or as an entrepreneur, and they give you something for them to get it back, make sure when they come, they get it back. If they give you a payment, make sure you deliver as you promise. If you say that you would be there, make sure that you are there. If you have established your standards of quality, make sure you always fulfill it. Because you have so much orders, don't reduce your quality and compromise in your standards. You see, there are a lot of little, little, little things that entrepreneurs take for granted. But at the end of the day, and eventually, these are the things that make or break you. We're currently operating in a society, in a community, where honesty is a very rare commodity. So as an aspiring entrepreneur, or an existing entrepreneur, 
if you can take honesty and make it your hallmark, you've already got an edge over so many people. Over so many people. I exist in the entrepreneurship ecosystem, and I can tell you, if you can brand yourself and people know you for honesty, that alone is a currency. So whatever you do, make sure you are honest. Honesty could be even more important than your product. It could be more important than many other things that you establish in your business. But always try and be honest. Make sure you deliver as promised. If you're able to do that, you're consistent with that, and people know you with that, you're good to go. You just need to stay home. Anywhere you are, they will come to you. And another thing that I will encourage you to hold on to is skills. I will put the mic down. Build on your skills. So I should take the other one. Okay. Work on your skills. Identify your skills. You know, many a time, we make a mistake. People will advise you, follow your passion and be an entrepreneurship or be an entrepreneur in what you're passionate, passionate about. That is right 10% of the time, but 90% of the time is not right. You can be passionate about something, but you might not be competent in it. You might be passionate about something, but you don't have the skills to turn that thing into something commercially viable. But make no mistake, you can be passionate about something and still be able to make it a business opportunity. But for most young people, what I see is, oh, I'm passionate about ice creams. So I want to be an ice cream seller. But probably the ice cream seller, you are not able to commercialize it to be a business that you want. Probably you are passionate about ice cream, but your skills is into making bicycle tires. I'm just giving an example. Or your skills is in auto mechanic. That is what you're skillful on. So be very careful to differentiate between what you're skillful and competent in and what you're passionate about. Um, do you know Dangote? You've heard about him. Africa's richest. What does he do? He does cement. That's how he made most of his money, through cement. But if you ask him what he's passionate about, his passion is not cement. Probably his passion is sitting at the beach and cooling off and drinking fruit juice. He could have said, okay, I'm passionate about the beach and fruit juice. I'm going to fix a fruit juice stand at the beach. Even though he wanted to be a billionaire. But if he had gone and established a fruit juice stand, he would have had a business, but he would not be a billionaire. Fruit juice stand is his passion. Cement is his competence. So always make sure you identify clearly what you are passionate about. That does not necessarily make you money and what you are competent in. Another thing that I will want to touch on has to do with standards. I spoke about honesty and within that I threw in standards. You see, we're living in a society where we're dropping the bar almost every other day. If you, you, you meet an entrepreneur, maybe they're making this mic. Let me take this mic as a product. So if you're making this mic, and this mic is called SS Media, so if I buy SS Media at your outlet in Serakunda, I should be able to get this product. If I buy your SS Media product in Basse, I should be able to have exactly the same one I bought in Serakunda. If I go to Dakar or Senegal or anywhere and I met this product, SS Media Mic, I should be able to get the same standards. But what we see is that your standards in Banjul is different from your standards you apply in Serakunda, which is different from the standards you understand. If you're making granite cake, it, the way your granite cake should taste on Monday is different from how it tastes on Thursday. Then next week is a different taste. That is not standardization. There are certain products that you sell, you have to be consistent. Things like food products, things like cosmetic products, 
there has to be some level of consistency. Then people will know that, okay, you are reliable. They can rely on you. Because they know that this is how it tastes. Whether I buy it at Banjul or Sarakula or Brikama or Joshua, the taste is the same. So make sure you know that. In fact, for those selling food, there is something called a recipe. In other areas, other jurisdictions, if you are selling a food type, you have a recipe. You know that to get this taste, I need five cups of this, two cubes of sugar, one this, three this, five this. It's called a recipe. It's a formula. Have the base times height. Your recipe also needs to come in the form of a formula. You write it down. For all you know, you could be so perfect, one day someone will knock and then you sell the recipe to them. Coca-Cola is a recipe. Coca-Cola is a multi-billion dollar business in the world today. It's just syrup and sugar. It's nothing special. But they have a recipe. So I can go and talk to the Coca-Cola company and tell them, I want to open a Coca-Cola outlet in Gambia. They will sell me the recipe, the formula. I don't have to make it. I just need to get the machines that mix it up and bottle it up. I pay Coca-Cola and they give me the recipe. So you need to have a formula to standardize your products. It is key and it's important. Another thing that I would like to talk about that is very practical. You see, there are human rights. Every human being has a right. And thank God now the Gambia is a democracy. Well, I believe so. So there are human rights. You have the freedom of expression. You have the freedom of movement. You have the freedom of association. Those are your rights. Women have rights. Children have rights. I'm sorry, entrepreneurs. You don't have rights. You should make your own rights. You don't have the right to access to finance. There is nothing that says right of entrepreneurs. That right, you have to fight for it. You have to fight for your innovation. You have to fight to access finance. Government is not going to help you if you're going into business and expecting that government is going to bail you out. Forget it. Then don't get into business. When you're getting into business, especially in a terrain that is difficult like us in the Gambia, a developing country, a poor country, you have to have thick skin and you have to ready, get ready for the tough times. Because the, you are a quitter, don't start. If you know that you have it in you, that when it comes difficult, you're going to say, I'm tired, I'm going to quit, then entrepreneurship is not for you. It's not for you. Don't waste your time getting into it. It's a war. It's an uphill battle. There will be frustrating times. There will be times that you will not make sales. And if you grow to a point that you even have employees, there is a time that you will have to sacrifice your own salary or your own benefits so that your entrepreneurs can get their salaries or your staff can get their salaries. And you have to constantly innovate. I will leave you with one assignment for you to go and check because today is Friday. We don't have much time to go into stories. There is a company called Kodak. You know Kodak? Most of you are young people. Um, I, I'm sure you... Have you... Does any, have any one of you witnessed the time when cameras had a film you open it and you put a film in there and you close the film and then the thing rotates and when you're done, you go to Photostar, you give them the camera. They... You know, you haven't witnessed that. Lucky you. Well, us growing up, we witnessed it. We were very, very young at the time. But there were films. You, there was a camera. You need to buy the camera, something like this, but not exactly like this. You open it up, you buy a film. And then you put the film inside, and then you close it, and then you rotate it, and then when you're done, it doesn't generate. You have to go to a photo studio, they wash that, they give you hard copies. There were companies that were thriving at the time. They were making money, they were doing that. But now they know more. You know why? They did not innovate. They were too comfortable where they are. They did not make any innovation. They did not make any effort to try and bring in new ideas. So when the smartphone came in and people can just take a phone and take a snapshot, they went out of business. You don't hear them anymore. So as an entrepreneur, you should constantly endeavor to innovate. 
That is the only way you can stay in business. You should innovate. You should create. You should make. You should continue to develop. There is a concept in, in Japan. The Japanese, they have a concept. They call it Kaizen. From here, go to Google and check it. K-A-I-Z-E-N. Kaizen. It means continuous improvement. What they are saying is that you can never reach perfection. But what you can do, however, is that every day you can make that, you can endeavor to ensure that you continue to make a step forward. You continue to progress. You continue to innovate. You continue to create. Any entrepreneur that refuses to innovate will eventually die. You have to be bold. You have to be educated. You will be shy, you can't talk. You need to get that out of your system. We're in 2024. If you are an entrepreneur, one of the ways to access finance is to articulate your business idea. Investors are not investing in an idea, they are investing in you, the human being. You, you are the idea. Ladies and gentlemen, Jumar Mubarak, thank you for your kind attention. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Babukar Saho, Deputy CEO of GCI. I have mentioned a lot of things that we have learned, and I'm sure that we have to take those steps to reach our goals. If you start a business and you don't have customers, or you fail once and you give up, you're not going to make it. You have to be consistent of what you are doing. And become the best student in the commerce field. And come out with six A's in words. <laughs> we are not only doing business, but also to allow him to give us source of motivation because we are all students. We are all learning and we encounter failure many times. Others do fail and give up. But I'm sure if he starts the journey with you, I guess we will all be motivated at the end of the day. So Mr. Swebu, a Commerce School of Member for that matter, you are highly welcome. Good morning all. It's truly very wonderful to be back here at New Zealand Senior Organization Week. Well, my name is Swayu Kebe, and I had the privilege of being a student here from 2021 until I graduated in 2024. But it still feels like I never really left because I still feel connected to this place and to all of you here. And as we say, once a New Zealand experience, it's always a New Zealand experience. So I'm still here. During my time here, I was in the Commerce Department in C1 Morning, and I was an active member of the Commerce School of Azure. But during the past three years, I normally, we normally sat in the same six, you guys are occupying me, during this seminar, learning and listening. And I'm glad to be here again for the fourth time. But this time around, I'm here to share my experience, strategies, and hopefully to motivate and inspire you all to reach your own academic goals. Now, but before going there, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the members of the Commerce Club, both the present and the past, especially the current executives, Mr. Abraham Dawa and his people, and of course the teacher coordinator, Mr. Jassi, unfortunately he is not here with us, and to all the important guests present here today. Now, I want to begin my speech by asking these few questions. How many of you here would like to see your grades improve? How many of you here would like to see your grades improve? Meaning you want to be having results that you never had before. How many? <laughs> all right. I guess we all want that, right? Now, the important question is, what plans have you made so far? To make sure you get those results. 
Do you now concentrate more in class? Or have you increased or improved on your studies? Or do you now attend extra classes? Or also, do you now ask your friends to explain, explain topics to you if you don't understand them in class? Are you doing any of these things? Now, the reality is this. If you are not in any of these things, it means you are not ready to improve. You will continue to get the same results. And if you are not careful, you will not even be able to maintain the results you were having before. Because as you are going, things will be getting harder and harder. So you are also expected to be making plans which is going to help you to improve or even to be able to maintain the results you were having before. And the second question is, why is there this inequality when it comes to our results? Why don't we all have the same results? Why do some people have good results and others will have bad results? Why? Since we all attend the same schools, we sit in the same classes, with the same teachers, but still, some will manage to do well, while others will not. Why? Is it that those who do well have higher IQ, meaning they are just smarter than everyone else? They are not. Or they just work harder than everyone else? Okay. This is going to be our topic of discussion today. Because there are many factors that leads to the success or failure of students in school. You don't always have to be intelligent to do well in school. And you don't just have to work hard to do well in school. And mind you, I said just. I am not saying you should not work hard. But do not just work hard. Because there are many factors which you need, which is going to lead you to succeed in schooling. Now, some of these factors are, I'm going to share a few with you. One is self-discipline and time management. As a student, if you are disciplined and you know how to manage your time, there is high chance that you are going to succeed in school. And two is your study habits. Your study habits, such as effective review, will help you improve or succeed in school as a student. And three is self-motivation and your attitude. Your determination toward learning or your positive attitude toward learning will help you overcome any challenge that you may face in school. Because there are a lot of challenges you are going to face when you are in school. So you have to be self-motivated to be able to face those challenges. And the last one, which is the fourth one, is your environment and the people you choose as your friend in school. Trust me, your friends will always influence you in school. It is either they influence you to go do good or they will influence you to do bad. So know the type of people you choose as your friend. Your friends will either contribute to your academic success or they will contribute to your academic downfall. Now let's explain some of these things in the detail. The first and the most important of all is discipline. As a student, you cannot succeed in school if you are not disciplined. Even in life, you have to be disciplined to be able to succeed in life, right? Disciplined. As a student, you are all expected to respect your school rules and the regulations and also to follow them. Because if you don't, you will always cause trouble to yourself and they will always suspend you. So that means you will always miss your classes. Right? And discipline, secondly, discipline is not only about following school rules or also respecting the people around you, but also it involves how you treat or approach your own affairs. That is self-discipline. You have to be disciplined to be able to wake up early in the morning to come to school. You have to be disciplined to be able to wake up at night and study while everyone is sleeping in the house. You have to be disciplined to be able to attend study classes. Right? And the other important thing also is your behavior toward your teachers. If you want to get the best from your teachers, you have to do what they want. You cannot make life difficult for your teachers by disturbing them in class or not following them and expect them to help you when you need them. 
So make life easy for them and then they will also make life easy for you. Because we have all seen this situation like this in class. Wherein a teacher will be teaching and then you will ask the teacher to explain something or just to repeat something. But the teacher will just ignore you. But in the same class, if someone else asks the teacher to repeat themselves, the teacher will the teacher will be happy to do so. Why? It's not because the teacher hates you. But if things like this happen to you in class, you should question your behavior toward that teacher. Was I disturbing him in class? Was I listening when he was talking? Did I normally do his assignments for classworks? These are the questions you should ask yourself. After finding answer to these questions, now you try to work on those mistakes and correct them. So the next time you ask the teacher to explain something, the teacher will be happy to listen to you as well. Now apart from discipline, the other thing you need if you want to succeed in school, the second point was self-motivation, right? You have to believe in yourself that you can do it. If you have a math exam tomorrow and you think that you are going to fail that math exam, there is high chance that you will fail that math exam. Because 50% solution to all your problems is to be able to convince yourself that you can do it. So if you have math exam tomorrow and you think that you can do it, that means you are already 50% there. So the other 50% is for you to get the right materials at the right time so that you can get what you want. Right? Now, self-discipline, sorry, uh, believing in yourself does not mean you have to be overconfident. And I think most of us here are normally fooled by our performance in the junior school. Because we don't really struggle to do well in junior school. And that is the fact. So do not let your performance in the junior school fool you that you will be able to do the same things, the same methods to succeed in high school here, especially in New here. Because the worst result I got in New here was in my grade 10 first time and second time. I did not fail, but it was just average. But if you compare those results with the ones I got from grade 10 third term to grade 12, you can see the difference. The gap was too much. And I think that should not even happen. Because in grade 10 first time and second time, those are the times where I should even do better. Because the notes were not many, and they were easier compared to those in grade 11 and 12, right? But the reason I did not do well was, I was fooling myself that I would be able to do the last minute thing I normally do in junior school. And I hope you understand what I mean by the last minute thing. That is last minute study. And some even call it LMD. So I think the grade 11s and the 12s already know what I'm talking about. But this is for the grade 10s. So if you are here doing the same thing or hoping to do the same thing, please know that it is not going to work. Start preparing yourself now because the earlier you start, the better for you. And the reason why most of us do not like the study, maybe it is because it is too long or some will be like, whenever I try to open my books, I will just fall asleep. That was my problem too, I understand that. But it does not always have to be too long. You don't always need to study for the whole night. I am not saying you should not do it. Because I can remember sitting in those classes there from 10 p.m. at night to 7 a.m. in the morning just studying. But what I'm trying to say, what is more important is to be able to study effectively. Studying effectively is a choice. All you need is the right materials and the right mindset and use the right strategies to be able to study effectively. Studying effectively means using strategies that help you learn and retain information in less time and with a better focus. But I'm going to share some of the strategies that I normally use and they really work for me. So listen. One is you have to set clear goals. Know what you need to accomplish in each study session. Know the thing and make sure you stick to that plan. That is why I don't normally base my studies on the number of hours I want to study. 
But instead, I'm normally based on the number of topics I want to cover during that study session. So plan in advance. Plan the subjects or the topics you need you want to study before you start studying. And two, the second point is use effective learning methods. Effective learning methods. Do not just be reading your notes for the sake of reading. You are reading for you to be able to remember. Right? Do not just be reading for the sake of reading. Because it is very sad. For some people, they will spend hours or the whole night reading. But at the end of the day, if you ask them what they read, they will not be able to remember anything. So that is the worst thing you can do when studying. And the third point is review regularly. Do not just be reading like you are reading newspaper by just turning pages without coming back. After reading, try to go back, recap what you read, so that will help you improve long-term retention, meaning you will not be able to easily forget what you read. And the fourth point is make sure there is consistency in your studies. Studying effectively for three hours or four hours is better than studying for the whole night and end up skipping a day or two before you start studying again. So consistency is key if you really want to succeed on your studies. Right? Some people will just study for the whole night, just one day, and the next day you skip. The following day also you skip. So that will not help you. But if you are consistent, it doesn't matter, as I said, it doesn't matter how many hours you you study, but just make sure you do it every day. That will help you to focus and also to be able to easily put the information in your head and they will stay there for long. And please understand that all your subjects are important. So try and treat them equally. And I think this is where most of us mess up. Because sometimes we don't really feel we don't really feel happy or enjoy studying certain subjects, which was in fact my case. And I wish if I could have the, the chance to correct some of those mistakes. Try to treat your subjects. You know the subjects you are weak at. Focus on those subjects and then try to balance them. But for some people, maybe they don't appreciate the teaching style of the teacher. Maybe the teacher is too fast or too slow. It's fine. Okay. Maybe the teacher is too fast or too slow. So, or maybe something personal. So they don't always understand when the teacher is teaching. But please do not let that make you lose interest from that subject. If the teacher is too fast and you can't understand in class, try to seek help from your friends and hopefully they will help you to understand and try to give more time to that subject when you are studying at home because the worst thing you can do is to also ignore the subject when you are studying. Oh, no. He's on the high table and I forgot to introduce even those without table. They are highly welcome. So can you put your hands together for Mr. Fabrice? <laughs> Next on the agenda, we have a Nostratarian. What a Nostratarian does outside the world, that is what we bring back to the school. And this school produces a lot of potential students out there. So we don't need anybody else to come and orient us about business stuff while we have our own people. They are making it out there. And this Student, honorable let me not mention the name for now. This honorable is economic at the Ministry of Finance. He is also responsible for asset. Um, liability management at GT Bank and financial analysis. <clears throat> he 
is also a bachelor of economics of the University of Science and Technology, I think, in China. The international finance and international economics, micro and macro. Money and banking, econometrics and business statistics, thesis, accelerating economic development and improving the current account through the industrialization, the case analysis and the Ghana. The person that is yet to come. It's no other person, but the one who failed my test. The practical that I have done here, many of you will join him and celebrate. Because when I say action speaks louder than voice or louder than words, who in the high table make a difference? Can you guess? It's who? If you are one. So, Mr. Malik Mohamed Jallo, you are highly welcome, please. For 11 years. So, um, the MC gave a brief um, a biography. Or, so, I want to correct something. Currently, I am at the Ministry of Finance, uh, at the Directorate of Revenue and Tax Policy. But I was um, the Asset Liability Management Officer at Guarantee Trust Bank. So, which means I'm no more at Guarantee Trust Bank. Is that clear? Yeah. All right. So I'm trying to be, I will try to be short in what I'm going to say. And um, I'll try to be realistic. And I will also try to be precise. So <clears throat> at Duty Bank, I was doing asset liability management. Right? So asset liability management simply means which of the financial statements does asset and liabilities fall? Which of the financial statements does asset and liability fall? Financial? Okay, let me say this clearly again. I know financial, what I'm saying which of the financial statements financial statement means profit and loss or income statement and balance sheet and cash flow so which of the three does asset and liability management fall right i like that so technically that means i was managing the balance sheet of the bank and i was here as a deputy head boy from C3. Where are C3 people? <laughs> All right. So it's nice to be back. Now let's go to the, to the main point of discussion. So a lot of wonderful speakers here have made very important points about uh, entrepreneurship. I want to make one fundamental distinction. That is the distinction between trading and entrepreneurship trading and entrepreneurship trading is more of a speculative in nature arbitrage we did arbitrage in economics right buy from a low market price and sell at a high market price so you make the difference as your profit terms of cost just simple that's arbitrary so our friends our colleagues myself and others those who buy clothes and sell it back those who buy shoes and sell it those who buy phones and sell it that is trading okay entrepreneurship it's more of creation it's more of production i like the amazing lady here she made mention that when she was doing cosmetics selling um sprays and all that she just felt like she's just me 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 what is the impact so entrepreneurs 
big impact. And this is why the risks that they face, the entrepreneur and the trader, the risks are different. As a trader, I am worried that the goods are going to come, whether they are going to come on time, and whether I will have somebody to sell, and at what price am I going to buy it, and what price am I going to sell it. An entrepreneur is worried about whether government policies, about whether he will be able to have capital to kickstart, about thinking about a problem in society that he is or she is trying to solve. So entrepreneurs are basically problem solvers. And that is why when they succeed, they succeed big. You know Elon Musk, right? Elon Musk gave out $1 million a day to the Trump campaign. $1 million per day since he joined the campaign until election day. Now, Elon Musk is an entrepreneur. And that's why he spent more than 20 to 30 years in, in research, investing in research and development. What did he develop? SpaceX, the company that does, that moves ships or rockets to space. What did he develop? Electric vehicles, Tesla vehicles that uses electricity, battery to charge. And because of this, it was challenging at the beginning, capital and all this stuff to get before you get started. But when he succeed, he succeed what? B. So what am I trying to say? Entrepreneurship is extremely risky. And no matter how you try to quantify risk, you cannot calculate risk. You can try to estimate risk and mitigate risk. You can never ever zero rise risk. Are you guaranteed that tomorrow you will be alive? Are you guaranteed that tomorrow you will be alive? Are you even guaranteed that you will be alive to walk out of this hall? You are? You are? You are not guaranteed. So, risk is the uncertainty. Uncertainty about something happening or not happening. So, you don't know. What am I trying to say? It means that there is risk everywhere and everything that you engage in. That's why if you ask her, she will tell you she was not sure whether the business will work. No matter how you try, how much you try to plan, you are not sure whether it will work as planned. But that doesn't mean you should not plan. Because planning gives you idea of where you want to go and how you want to get there. A lot of one of the speakers mentioned vision, direction. As you are seated here, you have to visualize, you have to project yourself, you have to determine in five years. Nusrat will be done. Where would I want to be? What would I want to do? How am I going to get there? From your friends, your circle of friends, are these the right people who are thinking the way I am thinking? Or they are always interested in going to the parties? Because those small things that you ignore determines a lot in our trajectory, especially if you want to get into entrepreneurship. Another thing I want to mention is that the speakers, are we together? Yes. Are we together? Yes. The speakers mention about consistency and persistence. These two are fundamental because there will be failure. It is inevitable. There will be challenges, extreme challenges. It is not comfortable to get into the entrepreneurial journey. While I was undergraduate, I had a friend from Rwanda in China. He studied nanomaterials and technology. 
Nanomaterials means it's an area that tries to minimize usage of materials, usage of resources. How do we make the iPhone smaller or how do we make the laptop smaller but still with the same capacity or even more capacity than the others? So he was studying nanomaterials. And we were seated in the room. And he said he wanted to start a company in Rwanda that is interested in hydrogen fuels. I have no idea what he was talking about because I was always interested in finance and economics. He started bringing a whiteboard in the room. So I told him, Sava, this room is too tight. What are you doing? And then he put it on the wall beside his bed. And every evening, Sava will be scribbling differential equations, the calculus, advanced mathematics, solving, 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 solving. I look at this guy, I tell him, you will not make it. This, what, what, what is this? I don't understand. He told me, come, come. And then he put me to be part of it. And I start helping him solving differential equations. And we were working on it. Although I had not have any interest. But I saw that he has drive. He has passion. He is committed. Which is fundamental. First of all, before people believe in you, you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then how would you expect me to believe you? If you just tell me something and I told you that, hey boy, you do the boy, and then you just give up. So how would somebody else come to join you? You believe in yourself, people say no, and you persist. And so where was on it, when he has money, okay, for feeding, he cuts down his food expenses and takes courses that are related to hydrogen fuels. He cuts down his food expenses, traveling expenses, to start to buy the materials he needs. He cuts down his food expenses or going to the club or going to party or buying new clothes to search for a place to put his business. Five years later, I lost contact with him after we graduated. He went to Rwanda, I came back. I was scrolling LinkedIn LinkedIn. I was scrolling LinkedIn. It's a professional website that people use. I was scrolling LinkedIn and I saw Sauvé's picture in an, in, a, in an entrepreneurial forum as a chief guest speaker. And I looked at the profile. I saw Ziov. That was the name of the company. He, he even printed a t-shirt and gave me a one. I saw Ziov, CEO. And then I clicked to check. And then I saw he won government contracts. Imagine the journey of arguing with me, of cutting down his food expenses, the struggle as an international student staying abroad. Those who studied abroad will have an idea how painful it is, nobody to support you. You cut your expenses because you believe you have a business idea you want to work. It's running that company winning government contracts and training government officials. How much money do you think he's making? He's big, right? And then I was not shocked because I know where he was. He started. So you get shocked today because you were not there when he started. I just sent him a message. I told him, finally, Zelf is alive. And then he called me on WhatsApp and the night never ended because we spoke. We talk and talk and talk and talk. What does that say? Entrepreneurship is challenging. Entrepreneurship is painful. Growth and development is painful. It is hard. But that is what is worth doing. For you to solve a societal problem, you have to take up the challenges, the difficulties that others are not willing to take. And because of that, you generate what she say, sales, by building relationship. That becomes easy then. Your generation have something that we do not have and others do not have. Learning is easier now. But laziness 
is very common. Am I right? If you have, if you have a smartphone, put it up. If you have a smartphone, put your smartphone up. I want to see. I know it's Nusra, we don't like to show off, but I know you have. Right? So we have smartphones. But are we using technology for the purpose it is really meant for? A lot of us go to WhatsApp status, have your Instagram, have your Snapchat, have TikTok. I have WhatsApp. I don't have Instagram. I don't have Snapchat. I don't have TikTok. That doesn't mean I don't use them. But I target what I want them to share with me. There is something they call algorithms. Algorithms are things that track your behavior online. If you are always watching two useless people fighting, you will always find two useless people fighting the next video and the next video, right or wrong? Because the algorithm has checked and realized that Binta is always interested in people arguing. So it will pull things, people arguing, and bring it for you. But if you go to YouTube, or you go to TikTok, or you go to Snapchat, and you look at people that are starting businesses, I can bet the entrepreneurs sitting here will tell you that a lot of the things that they learn and the solutions and the challenges they realize, they first came across it on social media. But because they have targeted what they want, the algorithm will always respond to that. This guy is interested in football. I will always bombard him with football stuff. If you are interested in business, you search about it. The next time you come, it's going to be on your feed. But we are not, a lot of us are not interested in that. A lot of us are interested in what's happening in the car or whatever they call it. I am interested in personal development. When I go to YouTube, there's a lot of things I learn. You don't have to wait for your teachers. You have this opportunity. When the teachers give you a headline, go online, search, you will find. In fact, it's easier to study. You may not have to necessarily stick to the books. You may refer to the books, but you have opportunity to learn. But we are not using that. I will conclude. Like I said, I will conclude. The most essential part of a business, cash flow management. That's where I'm going to end. Because as a asset liability manager, this was my responsibility. What do I mean by cash flow management? If you have a bank account, right? If you go to the bank to withdraw your money, do you expect money to be there or not? Do you expect money to be there or not? You expect. Now, somebody at the bank is responsible to make sure that every single time somebody goes to an ATM to withdraw money, there is. Every single time some, the banks want to make payments on their behalf for their own operations, it is there. That was the role of the asset liability manager. So, which means I should know how much cash is coming at GT Bank at a specific time. And I should know how many cash, how much cash is leaving the bank. I should make sure there's no excess cash that we don't need. But I should make sure there is just enough to make sure that people have what they want. Do you understand the point? So this is cash flow management. This is simple cash flow management. In real business terms, what it means, you are buying from a supplier. You are selling to a customer, okay? Now you should make sure that the duration, the duration as the period at which you collect the money from the customer is closer or even shorter than the period at which you pay back your suppliers. What does this mean? If it takes me Are we tired? No. Are we not interested? Yes. So if I count one, two, three, I want silence. We go on. One, two, three. Great. So what I was saying, if you buy goods from your supplier 
and it takes you 30 days to pay back that supplier. But you give out the goods and it takes you 60 days to get the good from your customer. Are you going to have cash problems or not? Are you going to have cash problems or not? Let me repeat it again. If it, going to if it is going to take you 30 days to pay your supplier, but it takes you 60 days to get the payment from your, from your customer, are you going to have cash problems or not? Yes. You will have, right? Yes. Because it is taking you longer to get the money for you to pay back. And this brings in what? Trust issues. This brings in liquidity issues as a business. Liquidity in the sense that as a business, you have operational expenses, right? So this is basically what is cash flow management. The time you receive the money and the time you leave it out should be closed or the time you should even pay out should be longer so that you have some cash that you can... So, Madam Rose Coca has more than six years of entrepreneurial experience and two years of experience in agribusiness. Currently, Rose is the founder of Quick Cook Limited and focuses on source, sourcing leafy vegetables. I would like to visit your place, please. Highly welcome. Afternoon. I feel the stage, the, the podium makes me look, uh, makes me look a, a little bit extra small. I am already small in size, so I, I decide to take the middle part so I can see each and every one of you. Right? Um, my name is Rose Ekuba. Like I was a writer, and my brand is called. Can you pronounce it? Screen. Are you guys afraid of it? Are you Because there is no time 
I guess once we have our next speaker, we may like to go out to have this little break, come back, witness many, many more things that are yet uh, to deliver. And also, those of you who are jealous, we will serve you food after the break. So do not be crying, huh? My dear Yes, the next on the agenda, we have agro incubation of business, the training and coach. You are highly welcome, Mr. Kuba. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hello. Should I use the mic or I should project my voice? Are you sure? I can only use the mic if you all please be silent. The people that are talking are all from Badibu. Do you know why? I'm going to start with a story just to get their attention since begging is not helping. Um, you remember during President Jamie's era when we when they used to have tours in most of the villages across the country, right? They went to Badibu and they were actually uh, talking about some of the things that they would want to do for the village. Oh, is Badibu a town? Yes. Okay, let's call it a town then. So these descendants from Badibu, President Yame was asking, what are some of the things that they would need to improve on in their village? Some were saying that they need hospitals, some were saying that they need bones, especially farmers. And those people are not descendants of Baribu. I'm sorry if you guys are coming from Baribu, by the way. You know what they were saying? The Baribu girls were saying, go, Alafai, Panketo, Panketo. Those are the things that they need. So um, I hope I get your attention. By the way, um, I choose to introduce myself because at some point, uh, when people introduce me, I, I actually blush a lot. So I don't want to. I don't want you guys to see me blushing on stage. So that's why I choose to introduce myself. But first, I'll start with a story. Um, when I was in New York City Secondary School back in 2016, I had no clue what I wanted to be in life. I'm, I'm quite sure at this point, some of you don't have an idea of what you want to be. So, um, when I graduated, I was struggling at some point. So I had to think critically to figure out what exactly I wanted to do. I, I'm always the type of person that doesn't want to be behind the office desk, you know, handling financial transactions, even though I graduated in the commerce field. Everybody wanted me to do accounting because I was very good in accounting and I was very good with numbers as well. But I actually saw something else different. I wanted to do entrepreneurship. Unfortunately for me, I wasn't privileged to have that opportunity because the University of the Gambia don't actually provide that as a field of study. So I was forced to do something different. That's when I actually went for accounting as a field. I didn't do it because I didn't have a choice. I took a calculated risk, but that didn't stop me from what I wanted. Fast forward, in my third year, I was given the opportunity to intern 
with a non-profit organization that offers business development for young entrepreneurs out there. I use that opportunity and build my capacity. We all learn from them. And we all learn from him that no matter how you look like, you can achieve what you want. It does not matter how tall you are, it does not matter how short you are, or no matter how short you are, if you go outside, you're going to see the sky. So that is obvious. Just start and believe in yourself that you can do it, no matter what, how, where, anywhere in this world, wherever you stand, you can defend yourself. And these people right here are just one of the examples that we can take um, to, for us to build a self-motivation that we can make it if we believe in ourselves. And business is the only thing and is the only way out. You can start a business, earn money daily, hourly, weekly, and monthly. It's different from a salary. Somebody told me the last time, he said, when you place a banana or bunches of banana in front of a monkey, the monkey and banana and money in front of a monkey, the monkey will take the banana, not knowing that the money can buy many bananas. So those are the things that we uh, fail to understand. You cannot depend on salaries, you cannot depend on monthly payment, but you can be paid hourly, weekly, daily, and monthly. I think that is very, very helpful, Mr. Koga and Fadija, and the rest of the speakers. So we will learn from that, you know, we can start business now. There is no time. If you, if you do not take risk, you are not going anywhere. You have a little money. Buddy, who is the project coordinator of YTEP? Mr. Baggy, you are highly welcome. And can we have silence, please? Hello? 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 I know the mouths are busy, but just keep quiet at the moment. And allow our Honorable Baggy to give you something, please. I'm a business and entrepreneurship specialist. I studied my MBA specialized on entrepreneurship and management. Um, it's indeed a profound gratitude to stand before you today to reflect on the team building a business from mindset to creation. Um, it is said that you can start a business, a meaningful business for that matter, a viable business for that matter, without preparing your mindset. So this theme indeed reflects what we aspire to be in the future. We all want to be successful entrepreneurs in the future. Notwithstanding, I would like to take this opportunity to compliment the efforts of Nusrat Commercial a Commerce Club for coming up with such a laudable initiative. This is indeed laudable. It is in line with government efforts to ensure young people are employable, to ensure we eradicate or reduce poverty, to ensure we also create employment opportunities for ourselves and young people. On that note, it is also said that Entrepreneurs play a crucial role towards any country's development. They create jobs, they are innovative, they create employment opportunities, they contribute immensely towards poverty reduction, they also contribute towards the socio-economic development of any given country. It is also said that Entrepreneurs are the movers, they are the seekers, and they are the controllers of the world economies. 
And I guess we all want to be controllers and movers of this world economies. On that note, I am already inspired to stand before you. If you are inspired, tell your next neighbor that you are inspired. Let me see. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing. To be honest, I'm not hearing. Tell your neighbor you are inspired. All right, good. Then if you are inspired, um, as the team reflect, building or um, how to call it, starting a business from mindset to creation. In our local language, Wolof, they said, Yepsi Mind Villa. Can you repeat after me? Yepsi Mind Villa. Me, I'm not hearing you people. Is it the food? Okay. Um, Yepsi Mind Villa simply means we need to prepare our mindset. And to prepare our mindset, if we are to become successful entrepreneurs, we need to possess certain competencies. And these competencies include one, you have to set goals if you want to start your business. You have to set goals and setting goals, you have to ensure you are well informed in setting your goals. If you are not well informed, you are outdated. Because if you are not updated, you are simply outdated. Nowadays, we have a lot of um, social media platforms. We use our mobile phones to enjoy TikTok. We use our mobile phone to enjoy Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, you name it. But how many of us here are using our mobile phones to ensure we are well informed with regards to the type of business we want to start. How many of you? Huh? So meaning, okay, one, two. So meaning most of us are using our mobile phones just to listen to music, right? Huh? Or to listen to movies, or to watch movies. Huh? Okay. Um, to give you this information, please, if you are to become a successful entrepreneur, you have to be well informed. We see success stories shared by the Coca family. Um, Rose Coca, I met Rose Coca when she was very, 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 very young. And the first time I met Rose Coca, she was only having the idea. By that time, I was working at Gaipa, the Gambia Investment and Export Promotion Agency. I was the business development support manager. And when Rod Rose visited my office, we had some discussions. And then she was so brief with regards to the type of business she wanted to start. And then I was like, do you think you can start this business? She replied, yes. And my follow-up question was, do you have the required competencies to start this business? Then she started wondering what to answer next. Then from there, I exposed her to a training program called Empretech. Empretech it's a program to train young entrepreneurs on entrepreneurial skills and competencies. By then, Rose was only having the idea, the mindset to start her own business. Then from the training, Rose was lucky to be part of few young entrepreneurs that we are supported by Gaipa to start their own businesses. And today, Rose Africa is a household name. I was surprised to notice that most of you here as commerce students did not know about Rose. This is why I said most of you are using your phones, you are using your credit just to watch 
movies or music or irrelevant you know um, um topics that are displayed on tiktok and other social media platforms for you to become a successful entrepreneur please try to learn from other entrepreneurs how they started what they went through some of the challenges that they overcome to become where they are today rose africa is a household name in the gambia rose is not only doing oysters but rose is also designing plastic chairs he is also transforming car motor arm tires to tables chairs and etc one of the um, speakers here did mention that you can start your business with only 200 dollars and then most of you whilst i was sitting down there i can see most of you doubt that you can start your business with only 200 dollars is that possible or not possible it's possible okay now why why do you say that it is possible you said it's possible you said it's possible can you tell us how possible it is for you to start your business with only two hundred dollars yes All right. Um, that's a good try. Can we clap for her? Good try, please. Can we go for the Um, yes, it is possible because the word itself, possible, said, "I am possible." There is nothing on earth that is not possible, except you don't want to make it possible. Um, as commerce students, I expect you to be bold enough. To be confident enough to stand in front of any crowd and express yourself remember one of the speakers also did mention that for you to start your business without even having a single dime is possible by pitching your business idea and then he asks what do you understand by the term pitching Pitching simply means to express and briefly explain your business idea to investors. If they are interested, they can easily form your business idea without having a single button. So meaning you can even start a business without even having a single dollar. Is that also possible? Huh? Only having the idea. Huh? When you pitch your business idea to interested investors, they can easily support your business idea without you spending a single dime. Okay, part of your competencies that you need to um, possess includes one, you have to be innovative and creative. I guess we all know innovation, right? We all know creativity right to start your business please try to be innovative and creative do not go in for business for the sake of seeing Fatumata is doing tailoring business you also want to venture into tailoring business or you see Samba is doing fashion shop business you also want to start fashion shop business you should put into consideration how innovative your business idea is, how creative your business idea is. You should also put into consideration the viability of your business idea, the uniqueness of your business idea, so that you can be competitive and you can also have what we call a market niche. Other than that, um, if you are to become a successful entrepreneur, 
you have to be disciplined. But now, we are just discussing, right? If I am to judge you people, I will say you are not ready when it comes to discipline. Why I said that? Almost more than 10 minutes, we are asking you people to be silent so that you can get what we want to share with you. The ones, the ones that are not interested, they went out. You know me, I'm very frank when it comes to my discussion with young people. The ones that are interested and the ones that want to become a successful entrepreneur in the future are the ones that are sitting in front of me. Can you clap for yourself? Yes, I am saying this because no matter busy you are, no matter how tired you are, we also left our busy schedules to be here with you people. For me, I travel all the way from Basse yesterday night just to be here with you people. So I think if I am patient enough waiting, you should be more patient to wait and listen why we are here today. Huh? That's me. I am very frank when it comes to my discussion with young people. Apart from discipline, for you to become a successful entrepreneur, you have to be persistent. Persistent in the sense that you cannot start a business today and you think you should succeed tomorrow. No. It takes time. It is a process. And this process, you have to trust the process. You have to be persistent. Either you, 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 you're making money or not. But believe in yourself that one day you will make it. No matter difficult it is, be persistent. Have this mindset that I will make it and you must make it. That's how entrepreneurs think. You might see people like Mohammed Ja, the owner of Q Group, right? You know him. You might think that Mohammed Ja just wake up one morning and then make it in business. No. Maybe some of you, we are very, very young. Mohammed just started from Quantum Net. I think all of you know Quantum Net. That's where he started. Which was, in fact, a partnership business. He was not the only person running that business. Eventually, he moved from Quantum Net to Q. Um, Q, 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 how to call it? Q cell. From Q cell to Q city. And now we are seeing it is growing and growing bigger. And now it is called Q group. Someone said, um, sometimes it is not necessary for you to have a business plan. If I am right, I guess I had it here. But to tell you, they said, Failure to plan simply means planning to fail. And they also said, a rolling stone gathers no moist. Now, if we are to take example from ourselves, I'm not to discriminate, but we are discussing. A blind person with the stick that is guiding him or her if that blind person happened to leave that stick behind, do you think that blind person will find his or her way out? Huh? So having a business plan and not having a business plan is like that. Without a proper business plan, a comprehensive business plan for that matter, likely you will fail in your business. Because you did not have a roadmap, you did not have any guideline that will guide you towards how you're going to implement your business objectives and your business activities. 
So the business plan is to help you, guide you to be successful in your business. So, for you to become a successful entrepreneur, you should be able to develop a comprehensive business plan. And from that, you should also have the ability to conduct a situational analysis for your business. Um, situational analysis um, simply means for you to outline your SWOT analysis. Someone did mention it here. Your strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats of your business. As a business person, the first thing you need to work on is your strength. The strength that you have over your competitors. Remember, you are not the only person that is going to operate within the market. You have other competitors. How are you going to differentiate or distinguish yourself from those competitors? You have to work on your strength. Sometimes, um, they will tell you you don't need that educational background to start your own business. But you need the competencies, the entrepreneurial competencies, so that you can start your business. And these competencies are the ones I am now sharing with you. Try to remember them. Because without these competencies, you cannot start a meaningful business idea. We'll be just going round and round and round, just around one school. Remember, in most cases in the Gambia, people will say Gambians cannot do business. I think all of us used to hear that. Senegalese can do business more than Gambians, or Nigerians can do business more than Gambians. Not actually, because they have the mindset, and we can also have the mindset. It depends how we think innovatively and what we want to do in the future. But now, you start your business. Tomorrow, you are called as Njeke for my sisters and my nephews. Huh? You are called as Njeke to go, for a, to go and attend a naming ceremony. Now, the business coffers is not your money. What belongs to the business belongs to the business. What belongs to you belongs to you. That's the entity concept. And the entity concept, you need to be able to separate yourself from the business. But in the Gambia, in most cases, when there is naming ceremony, you go to the business coffers and take the money, you go to the naming ceremony. Now, the Giriots will be shouting your name and you are spraying them with the Dallas's. Forgetting that tomorrow you have to go to the market and do shopping for the business. Now you spend all that money at that naming ceremony. Will the business survive? Huh? The business will not survive. Any party you heard of, then you go and attend that party. Will that business survive? That business will never survive. So we need to put into consideration the entity concept. And also, we should have these competencies in us to be able to manage our finances. I had Mr. Mohammed, it's Mohammed, right? He did mention of cash flow, financial statement, right? And someone was bold enough to answer the question by saying that equity simply means shares, right? And debt is a money that is you are liable to pay, right? I think that was the answer. Huh? We should be able to differentiate these two if we want to be successful in our businesses. And the other competent that we need to possess is we need to be self-motivated. If you are not self-motivated, 
you cannot start a meaningful business. You need to have the passion to say that I am going to start this business and then I will love this business. Because without that passion, you cannot serve the business the required time that the business needs. And business needs a lot of time. A lot of time. You have to wake up early in the morning, latest by 7 o'clock, to open your business for the customers. But you cannot sleep up to 1 o'clock in the afternoon and you want to start operating your business. If customers are used to that pattern, you will lose most of your customers because they will be communicating to each other. Ah, borom bitik bobunun. Ah, borom business bobunun. Kogudu de ne kasi plasan. So time is very significant for you to start your own business. And also, you should also factor the four P's called the marketing mix. I think commerce students here, um, you know about the four P's, right? Yes. Huh? You know about the four P's? Yes. And the extended three P's make it seven. Yes. You, you know them? Yes. But you know the four, right? Yes. Okay, help us with the four. Yes. Help us with the four. The four the four P's are product. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Right. Right. Promotion, right? Product, price, place, and promotion. Okay, now, I will add TDM, four P's and one T. What is, the, what, what is your understanding of the T? Four P's and T. One T. T, T, like D. T, H, E, T, T. Time. Time. You agree to that? You agree? Someone said no. Someone is saying no. Someone is saying no. Okay. Okay, now. If you are afraid of talking, me, I will point at you now to talk. Huh? You said yes, right? You said no. Huh? Time. Okay. No problem. Let me help you. Hence, we don't have time. We are against time. Um, the T simply means time. But now, how did this time relate to product, price, place, and promotion? Can someone help? Who will help? How did time relate to product, place, price, and promotion? Who will help? Huh? You said... I, I'm not hearing. Yes, hello. Hello, please. Um, I'm like killing two birds with one stone. Huh? I could stand here and just give you a speech. I'm done and then I go home. But now, I am seizing this opportunity to also offer at least a small training, capacity building to you, the young ones. This is because, like I said in the beginning, I am inspired to stand before young people and discuss about entrepreneurship. So, it's a matter of give and take, right? You know certain things that I don't know. I know certain things that you don't know. So, please share with us why time is related to product, place, price, and promotion. Who will help? Now, I have $100 for you. Huh? Yes. Who will try? I have hundred dollars. So now I make it two hundred. Yes. Yes. For example, if I have a business and I 
Yes, um, that's a good try. Uh, we will try. Thank you. Clap for her. We will try again. Yeah. Yes. 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 before you have a seat to attend to this event because I know it's not easy to live far away and then come to attend this type of programs but the love that they have for this country and the passion that they have for business and commercial industry I think um, we have to congratulate on you or con congratulate you once again the second thing is uh, before we move we have a digital marketer. Not digital marketer for that matter. But I guess the face is not new to all the students of Nusra Senior Secondary School. I call him a digital vigilant. He is one of the IT specialists in this country called Fallen Technology. He is the CEO of Fallen Technology. He is no other person other than Mr. Farah. Mr. Farah 
you are very welcome. And the state is yours. From Basse to here just to attend this program. Personally, I came here around 10, but I have been waiting. And I think you all know that we are very busy. And we also acknowledge your patience for sitting down and waiting. But one important thing, for you not to waste your time, let's say, for example, you have been sitting here since morning. But at least, even if you are going to go home with one thing, you have to make sure that at least you listen. Because like I always said, listening is a skill. You can be here, you are just hearing our voices, but you are not actually listening. And you have to take something home today. And as you all know, my role in Nusrat as an ICT instructor, um, also admission officer, and a senior master for ICT, but outside Nusrat, I'm also part of the technology industry. And uh, I have started my business since 2016. And I provide a whole lot of services when it comes to technology. But one of my main services is designing websites. And uh, I have built websites for a lot of organizations, including the Gambia Youth Chamber of Commerce, you mentioned it. Uh, Activista, Peace Hub Gambia, uh, Peace Ambassadors, Gene Gambia. These are all organizations that I have worked with. So I've built more than uh, 50 websites. And to be sincere with you, it has not been an easy journey. And the reality is, uh, as you people are growing up, we, we want you to have a, a different mindset. And you have to reset your mindset because at the end of the day, uh, I would say business is what can make you wealthy, not salary. And most of the time I'm being asked, how do I manage to have a full-time job at Nusrat and still run my own personal business? Uh, but most of the time what I tell people is that it's about learning how to manage time. Someone mentioned time here. And time is the most important asset that you have in your life. Because everything that you are going to do is going to happen within a period of time. So right now, all of you have the time that you need. Apart from school, you have time to build up something. And what I always tell people is, before you start building a business, build yourself first. Before you start building or starting any business, build yourself first. And most of the time, um, when I'm giving a platform, I always talk about personal branding. Now, what do I mean by personal branding? Now, most of the time we hear that, yes, I have a brand, we brand businesses, we brand organizations, but you as a person, you should brand yourself. And this is about, you know, your personality, your skills, and whatsoever. So that when people hear you, right now, once you hear fall, you think about ICT. So what about you? When people hear your name, what do they associate your name with you? That is absolutely important. So I would advise everybody that is here that, you build that personal brand. You start working on that as of now until when the time comes, maybe when you complete high school, there is no time for you to start a business. Even as a young person right now going to high school, you can start something. And it's all about being innovative. Now, someone also said here that uh, if, if you see a friend open a restaurant, and then your friend is succeeding, that doesn't mean you should also come and open a restaurant. Okay? Now, you may copy or come up with a restaurant, but you have to be a little bit more innovative. You have to come up with something a little bit more different. Okay? And the reason I am here is to talk about one important thing, which is digital marketing. Because I know how it changed my life, 
uh, since Facebook started in 2004, I think my, 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 my Facebook account was created in 2007. And since then, I do share the work that I do online and people start contacting me for those services, especially in terms of graphic design. And that's why you people are in an era, you are in an era of technology. And most of you, I would say all of you, at least know how to use a smartphone, right? This guy, the last speaker was saying about how you should make good use of the smartphones that you have. Your smartphones are computers. So make good use of your social media. Now, let me just tell you what happened about two weeks ago. Um, a business, an enterprise called, and then they need somebody to manage their social media and also build them a website. And when I went to their office, uh, one thing he told me was... He went online and he searched for web designers in the Gambia. And for some reason, my name and another person pop up and then he was able to choose me. And the reason why, and I asked him, what was the reason why you decided to choose me? He said, all those, because finally he chose two people, but he said the other person uh, is about presentation. That means how I present my website. That means uh, the way I build my websites, the presentation was good. And that is to tell you that if you are building something or you are creating something, packaging is important. The way you present it is important. You understand? No matter how useless or how useful the, 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 the material is, the way you package it, the way you design it is absolutely important. And right now, I have a contract with them. I'm building their website and I'm managing their social media website, uh, social media platforms. And at this moment, any of you can do that job. And right now, I can tell you that there is a Nusrat student that is even helping me do that. Because in my business, right now, my main developer, the person that is uh, doing most of the development coding is from Nusrat. He graduated in Nusrat 2001, uh, sorry, 2021. And immediately he graduated, I took him to my company, recruit him, and he has no university degree. And right now, just like the platform that you are using to register online, he built something similar to that for the Nusrat Private Wars. Isn't that great? And then he has never been to the university. But that is telling you that you can start getting skills from high school. And even right now, I also recruited another one just from 12 Science 1, the last batch. He's with me right now and he's the one doing the social media. He's the one creating videos for TikTok. And at the end of the day, he will start earning money. You understand what I'm saying? So at this point, whatever skill you are going to have, make sure digital marketing is included. Have these skills and make sure that at the end of the day, um, you harness these skills and make the best use of these skills. And today, let me tell you one thing also. Um, have you all seen what I wrote today? Are you seeing this? Have you ever seen the brand? Yes, you have seen it. Most of the teachers are wearing the brand. And this brand, I introduced it. Uh, I learned the brand 10th of August this year. And the idea just came up and I was thinking of, because I wanted to start a t-shirt business, but I didn't know how to name it. But later I decided that I'm going to call it Believe because of the idea of me believing myself about eight or seven years ago when I started my business. You, I started my business with nothing. And today, at least I'm able to employ people and things are going very fine. So that belief came up and then I said, I am going to celebrate my nine years of success with a T-shirt brand and I'm going to call it belief. And this belief brand, at least today, two of you will go with a T-shirt. 
two of you, I will ask a question. If you can answer it, I will give you uh, a T-shirt today. So get ready for those questions. And uh, one last thing, because uh, I have to go to Banjo right now. So I would want to say more, but there will be no time for now. But all I'm, all I'm going to say is whatever you are learning in terms of academics, make sure you acquire skills. Whatever you are going to learn, make sure you add a skill there. Now, the world is changing. Today, you may be learning a particular syllabus in high school while that syllabus has been outdated. So what you need to do is to adjust yourself as you go. Whether you are in the commerce field, in the arts field, in the science field, you have to make sure that all the time you are upgrading. But how will you upgrade yourself? Is by making good use of the internet. All of you have access to the internet. So you can search. Now we have AI. We have artificial intelligence. You can do your research using AI. You can have every information that you need. If you want to learn things like computer programming, trust me, if you are focused, within six months, you can build something. It's all about focus. In those days when we do not have the internet like you have it today, we struggle to get knowledge. But today you can do a course in two days and acquire a skill. And all these things are happening on the internet. So please make sure you make best use of the internet and also learn about digital marketing. Because we all know traditional marketing have been here for some time. Newspaper, television, etc. These are all true. But now, most people are online, isn't it? If you want to advertise something, yes, you may take it to television, but you are going to get minimum viewers. But if you want people to see what you're doing, obviously, it's either you go to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, isn't it? So these are platforms that are absolutely important. All right? Now, on that note, um, I just wanted to... Um, give away two t-shirts. Can I get those shirts, please? So I'm going to ask a question. Uh, let's see whether you guys will be able to answer it. If you answer it correctly, you will have uh, one of the belief t-shirts in black color. Um, the first question, can you, is the mic? Give them the mic. The first question will be, are you ready? Are you ready? Because I want the winner to be a boy and a girl. Okay? So the question is, which GSM operator was the first to bring internet to mobile phones? And which year? Anybody who can answer that question, you will have a t-shirt right now. Gamsel. Okay. Next one. You said Gamsel. Okay, next, next one, next one, next one. Who else? Okay, Q cell, gun cell. Chromium, yes. Another one. So, but do you know, you, you guys are not mentioning the year. Hmm? In the Gambia, I mean. Which do you want to start with that job? Uh, it's about social media. I know all of you know the term hashtag, isn't it? Hashtag. Who can tell me, who can give me a proper explanation of what is a hashtag and what is its function? Every time you post, most of the time you say hashtag something, hashtag whatsoever. So what is the function of that hashtag? Anyone? Uh, what is the function of a hashtag? Why? Let's say something is trending, like let's say you are into graphic designing or you are into video production. So if you post a content about graphic design or video production, you must have, after, in your, in your let's say your caption is, you must put their links, hashtag graphic designing or hashtag video production, so that if somebody search for graphic designing, your content may pop up. Something like that. Okay, anyone have passes? Anyone? Uh, the belief, uh, let's say, for example, somebody buys the belief t-shirt and then the person takes a picture and then send it to me. When I'm posting it on Facebook, every time after writing something at the bottom, 
I will say hashtag believe, hashtag boom boom, or hashtag believe in yourself. So why? That means if somebody sees that post and want to know more about the brand, he can click on any of those hashtags. When, for example, if I click on hashtag believe, it will show me all the posts that has hashtag belief. So that will give you more information about that particular post. Okay, so give this thank you and uh, thanks to the Commerce Club because every year um, they will invite me here to come and deliver a speech. So congratulations to the Commerce Club and I hope that next year we have a better, better, better program like this, okay? So thank you very much, all of you. I said, on behalf of Gomez, I'm here to decide a poetry. But for you to enjoy poetry, there must be a complete silence, or else you're gonna get me. So here it goes. The title is my journey. They can never hate me more than the way I hate seeing the tears of my mommy. I mean, my journey, I don't drink bony because mommy is hungry and my siblings go to school with no money. So in my journey, I don't want to be a junkie, neither a bandit, a halal to my man, they want to search it. My main objective is to break the chain of poverty in my family. May I love you, I tell my dear girl, I don't want to be a junkie, I don't want to be a junkie, I don't want to be Yes, everything in life is time. You can't just jump from level one to nine. You should move step by step like a kick cup, not a rubber cup. Because patience is this moment to create your destination, not the motion that causes commotion. Anyone among the crowd who can give me the answer to that question? Who is an educated person? Person in mind. Can entertain a new idea. That any time an idea has been passed to you, you don't instantly reject that idea, you don't accept that idea, but you take that idea and check it from the outside and the inside and from all angles and to see what you can find. And to see if that new idea can add any value to your life. Now the guests that have already spoken here today, they have shared some pretty good information with all of you. And I bet you that is sitting at home right now watching us, I bet you're also going to find something very important in what those people have actually shared with you here today. That is the truth. But the problem that we have in this country is not lack of opportunity. There are opportunities everywhere. You know, you that the problem that we have is that we are in the habit of rejecting new ideas every time they have been passed on to us. We instantly take those ideas. They are having to actually check them. They can add any value to our life or not. So, Salu, can you tell us what have you learned from this seminar? Because we, I have learned that many of the science students are not willing to be part of the, the, this program. Why do you choose this program? It is because, as we all know, our business is running the world. You want to be rich fastly, you engage yourself in business. And we talk about, when you talk about business, we talk about entrepreneurs. Because we see people that are doing business, but you cannot call them entrepreneurs. So what do we talk about entrepreneurs? What do you say about entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs, these are people that take high risks. What do you think? They invest. They, without no expectation. That's that. So, and the reason, the main reason why I came here, because I, I want to be an entrepreneur. And as an engineering student, your first year, your first year in university, you have to train entrepreneurs. So when I heard them talking about entrepreneurship and building business from mindset to creation, I thought that this is my way. So I have to come here and, and get some knowledge there. So that's why today I'm here. That's, that's, that's really, really amazing. So what have you learned today um, in the program? Uh, I learned a lot because I meet with different people. And if I was, if I was, if I want to learn in this, uh, this in class, I would not be able to. Because today I sacrificed some of my time and Alhamdulillah I came here, I learned a lot here. I learned a lot because I really want to know, I, I really want to do business, but I don't know how to start. But I asked this question, I asked many people about how to start business and they give me many ideas how to start business. One of them is to stop uh, like, like procrastinating. Because every time I would say to myself that I want to start, I want to start, I know. So today Alhamdulillah, I was able to learn many things here about your plan, plan your life, plan, plan first and have the goal have the mindset and you able to 
big in a form of action. So I think from this point, you'll be able to convince the science students, the mindset that they have is that uh, business is for only the commerce students. I think you can convince them by uh, the, the worst or the, the things that you have learned from this program. Yeah, for so sure, uh, as you said, uh, many people, many science students think that uh, business is for only commerce students. But let's talk about LMOs. LMOs, those are science students and they are engaging in business. And this like pharmacy. As a science student, you can do this, you can build a pharmacy in the form of business. So business is not only about those who are doing, uh, those who are doing commerce. Business, many of these science, many of these business money are seen, they are science students. Understand? So business, uh, when you talk about business, many science people think that uh, business is only a uh, commerce student. But uh, science students have more opportunities than commerce students in terms of business. Because you have an idea. For example, I'm an engineer. I want to be an engineer. So for me to be an engineer, I can build a lot of business from my knowledge I gain. Understand? Because Good afternoon, viewers. Um, once again, my name is Ali Sohna. And we are here today in Mr. Senior Secondary School to attend the program seminar. And we are here with the president. And we want to ask a few questions uh, about the seminar. So, can you introduce yourself? My name is Ibrahim Adawa. I'm the current president of Mr. Commerce Club, 2024 Um, Mr. President, uh, I would like to ask a few questions um, about the seminar. So, what do you think about the seminar? What impact does it have in the uh, students and the society? Actually, the seminar is an annual event where Mr. Commerce Club is every year. We bring people that are already in their business that they already have their businesses to come here and share their ideas with the students, to come and share their insight with students, to make sure they serve as a role model to the students. So that's why we see it's necessary for us to also to call for this important event. Okay, talking about the successful of the trade fair with the amazing speakers that you have from different, different companies that come to elaborate on how they start up a business. So what do you think we can uh, do to maintain that thing, to grow up, and then we will self-employ at the end of the day? Actually, as a president of the Industrial Commerce Club 2024-2025, this is my promise to people that I'm, I'll also, I'll try by all means this year, I bring more innovation to this club, that is what I or what that is what I and my executive we embark on. That's why we set a team that that talk about the building a business from mindset to creation. We see that as a as a commerce student or as a commerce club member, at least you should have a business idea whereby you can at the end of your at the end you can be self employed. You can be self employed. The the notion that we have to depend on the people for employment is what we want to eradicate into the we make sure after graduation we all have oh we have our businesses that we will embark on. At least you can try to employ even few people to make sure we change their life and bring the economic the economic opportunities that people will have in this country. That's why we see it's necessary. We bring people from diverse areas, from insurance, from GCCI, from other 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 business areas to come and share their experience, to come and share their insight what they have what they have to my general members. Okay, we have learned that uh, you talked about the many opportunities that you, are, you guys are trying to um, create for the young ones that are coming. So what are the opportunities that you guys are um, planning for for the young ones? Yeah, the opportunities that we are planning for the young ones is like, I see that the young people they are having their opportunities, but to venture in those opportunities is so that's why even in our commerce club, our general our members, our meeting with the general members, we task them, we give them the topic, the business topic, they go and do their research. Imagine our last meeting with the general members, we are by eleven, we are by twelve, twelve, twelve art morning, art students, they come with their team with the topic that talk about the starting a business with zero capital and they do justice to the topic. That I, the president, and I, 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 I term that as a, one of the most successful meeting with that I have in my general members. So as an art student, they are doing that. I see the potential that is in the art student and also in the other fields of studies, sciences and commerce. 
Yeah, that's why the business is not only percentage of the commerce, but also the art students are also venturing into the business. So that's why we open to all the students to come in and also to share their ideas that we have. And also we bring people in, even in our general meeting with the general meeting with them, meeting with the general members, we, we invite people like teachers to come also there and share their experiences with the general members. So oh, thank you so very, 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 very much, uh, Mr. President. And viewers, this is all we have for you guys today. And we have learned that um, the commerce club is not is open for every field. Either you are in commerce, arts, science, it doesn't matter when it comes to business. So from that, I would like to thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank you so very much.